Well, here in Manchester now we've started our rainy season, which usually lasts for about 363 days. The grey skies and the rain, day after day after day. So when you've finished scoffing the vitamin D tablets and having those sad lamps or whatever you can find to keep yourself cheery, still you're faced with these rain clouds every day. But it's these rain clouds in the northwest of England that bought, brought prosperity. Why is that? Well, it makes the atmosphere so damp. And although it's very bad for your rheumatics and for your mental health, it's very, very good at keeping fibres fibers of cotton together. And so, here in the northwest of England, the great cotton manufactories were, the great mills, everywhere. It turned Manchester from what was described as the prettiest market town in all of England into, well, dark satanic mills, perhaps. When all of those factory workers finished for the weekend, quite a lot of the time they go to the football. Crowds and crowds of people going to see Manchester City play and perhaps the other team down the road. I don't, I'm just saying. And that gave a great quality to people's lives and gave them heroes and you know the people who are playing then they sort of knew as normal blokes if you like they weren't bust in with millions and millions of pounds from other countries they were the homegrown talent started off as little teams and grew and grew now why am i telling you all this about football and rain and factories and cotton well and manchester well today it is the feast of the patron saint of football it is the feast of San Luigi Scrosopi, and he was an oratorian priest in Udine, towards the north right-hand side of Italy. He lived in the middle of the 19th century, and living there at the north of the Italian peninsula, you were really in the thick of changes as they came through in the 19th century, where the uh, French revolutionary forces, or Napoleonic forces, or Austrian forces, or Piedmontese forces, and so-called Italian unification catering forces, and all of those things. And political regimes came, and they seemed invincible, and then they collapsed and were taken over by another seemingly invincible regime, which, of course, in its time was taken over by another one. That happens. Politics changes, fashions changes, economic changes. You know, all of the, the planning um, for, for economic growth, or whatever it is, whatever planning there is. A virus comes along and everything's thrown upside down. But what San Luigi did, hence the football, is to use in the middle of all this, of all these great things going around. The little people were often forgotten. Of course, it's the little people who, who make everything happen. But their, their lives, their, their human lives, their lives together on their streets, uh, it doesn't matter, any aspect of their life. These, these were neglected, or could be neglected, and still are neglected, because grand policy can't really take into account of those people. You know, if you're doing the, the big sums on the paper or the big political moves or military moves, people become become numbers in a column. And so San Luigi there he opened an orphanage and he knew like those any lads who are left to their own devices will always go to the bad. So he got a football and started to kick around and and then He'd make sure they're okay and feed them and got them to help out 
around in the town. A bit like um, Don Bosco did, who was another oratory inspired saint. You know, keep the young lads busy, keep them together, keep them with you, keep them focused on doing good things because they love to do good things actually. You know, if you can get a group of, of teenagers and a little older perhaps to do good things, they love it. Yeah, they do. It's, it's remarkable. And by that, then, you know, their faith later starts to really kick in. So that's why he's the patron saint of footballers. Now, he's also the patron saint of those with HIV and AIDS. Now, how random is that, you might say? You know, football seems out of the blue. You've got HIV and AIDS here. Well, this is this is lovely actually. To become a saint is required usually that you perform a, a miracle is is approved by the church through your intercession. So we here on the earth ask our big brothers and sisters who are in heaven to pray for us. And when they take a particular sort of interest in our case, if you like, if God grants a particular favour for our good. That's usually termed a miracle if it's if it's against the natural order of things. Anyway, there was a young catechist in the south of Africa who had AIDS. You know, AIDS is rampant there still, and he was really getting ready to die. And in the oratory, one of the oratories in South Africa, that Oatshorn, a Dutch-speaking part of South Africa. <clears throat> there was a picture of Blessed Luigi Scrosopi and his friends in the community and and, and that person, they, they decided to ask his prayers because he had such a lovely smile, they said. He seemed such a happy priest. And so they asked his prayers and by the grace of God, those prayers were answered and what was a death sentence? was no longer a death sentence. His AIDS was completely removed, and the HIV too. And doctors who, who weren't Catholics, you know, the Dutch Reformed are not a bit pro-Catholic at all. Anyway, the, 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 the doctors said that there was no medical explanation for this that they knew of. And so the church pronounced it a miracle through the intercession of San Luis, well, who became San Luigi Scosopi. See, the Sisters of Divine Providence, which he'd founded, had made a home there in South Africa too. And so, because of that, he was made the patron saint of those suffering with AIDS and those with HIV. Now, here in Manchester, again, as well as the football, there's a very large uh, gay community as well. And many of those people from early years have suffered from HIV and AIDS, and other people have, of course, but this in Manchester is the, the primary community. And I remember talking to one oldish chap who, who had AIDS, and I didn't know him actually, and he said to me, Here, father, he said, have you got any of them prayer cards for that, um, that Luigi Grosshoppy? I said, yeah, why? He said, I didn't know you'd heard of him. Oh, yeah, he said, yeah, he's a um, patron saint to people like me. We, we ask his help. And that was so lovely um, that in what can seem an otherwise um, a hopeless situation, there's someone interceding before the face of God to help whoever's going through it to find ways of, of being full of grace at that time. If it's God's will that it's cured, that's fine. If it's God's will that it's not, you'll be given graces to use everything for your salvation and the salvation of the world around you and the glory of God. Oh, that's a lot. So, football and AIDS. I do random things. But they have their patron saint whose concern is for those things. And he is before the face of God, St. Luigi Scrosopi, praying 
precisely for those people in the situations. So may his prayers carry you on. May you keep a smiling face in the grey and the rain. Well, we try. May God's holy angels who are all around us support your goings out and your comings in and be with all those whom you love both in this world and the next.